Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. One King! One Husky! Gold. Gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice... Bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. <laughs> right em, cowboy! Yes, sirree. Little wonder many a He Man Hollywood movie star goes for this breakfast. It's swell-tasting Quaker puff rice or Quaker puff wheat with milk or cream and fruit. These king-size, ready-to-serve premium grains of rice or wheat pack a man-size taste wallop. They're good for you. They're shot from guns. Yes, actually exploded up to eight times normal size to make them crisp and tender as nuts in November. Tomorrow, sure, treat yourself swell. Enjoy this breakfast treat. Eat Quaker Puff Rice or Quaker Puff Wheat. Mush, get along there. It was shortly after daybreak when the sound of a cracking whip split the air. Joey Scanlon Mush. was driving his dogs at a heartbreaking pace on, along the west side of Blue Nose Canyon. Mush, you flea-bitten malamutes. Faster, I'll lash your hides open. Mush, then. Without shortening their strides, the dog team Mush. crossed the canyon bridge and kept going for another half mile Come until on. they reached a crude shack set well back from the trail. Ho, ho there, ho, ho. Hey, Frank, mud. Sam Hill's eating you, Joey. You act like a starving wolf pack's at your heels. It's worse than that. Huh? Boys, I got no time for talk. Here's the facts. I got the cash on my sled. I had to shoot a bank guard to make my getaway. Did you kill him? No, I got him in the arm. Good. I don't want to get mixed up in any murders. Did that guard get a good look at you? I had a bandana tied over my face, but I didn't get away clean. What do you mean? A Monty's after me. A Monty? That's bad. Mighty bad. It's Sergeant Preston and that dog of his. I have all the cussed luck. Your trail leads straight to us. You jughead, now we'll be tied into the hole. Uh, why shouldn't you be? You agreed to help me for a share of the loot. But we didn't figure you'd leave a trail for Preston and his dog. I never would have pulled a robbery if I'd known they were in town. We've got to do something. I'd get your axes and be quick about it. You got an idea, Joey? We'll tear down a bridge. As long as he can't cross it, I'm safe. That's right. The bridge will stop him. Come on, Mark. Now hurry. There's no time to lose. Preston's dogs are fast. I almost killed my team to get here ahead of him. The blades of their axes descended again and again as Joey Scanlon, Mark Carey, and Frank Morris worked with frenzied haste. It's going down. As soon as I get this timber, she ought to go over. Get ready to stand clear. The bridge swayed dangerously as the supporting timbers weakened. And finally... Get clear! There she goes! That does it, boys! Come on, Mark! Start. As the bridge collapsed to the canyon floor, the three men scrambled to the safety of the trail. That'll stop, Preston. Come on, we'll get behind them rocks. Yeah. Hey, listen. You sounds like a dog team. It's coming this way fast. That's Preston. It's the idea of the rifle, Joey. I'm taking no chances. There's a foot trail over there leading to the floor of the canyon. He can get down there and come up this side. Put the rifle away. Preston can't take his dog sled down there. There's no telling what Preston will do. There he comes. Yeah, I see him. Hidden by big boulders, Frank Morris and Mark Carey watched intently as the Mountie came into sight. You see the bridge is down in a minute. <laughs> yeah. He's going to stop them dogs in a hurry. With their attention focused on Preston, neither Frank nor Mart noticed Joey Scanlon cock his rifle. Oh, he sees the bridge. Yeah, he's stopping his dogs. And I'm stopping that money for good. Oh! Hey, what the Scanlon? I got him. He went down. Did you see that? No, I'll finish him off for sure. No, no, you won't. Hey, let go of me. Drop that rifle, you trigger-happy thing on. Drop it off. Take your arm. Hey, Frank, don't. 
Don't drop it, I said. Oh, oh my That's God. better. That's the idea. I gotta make sure that money's dead. Listen, Scanlon, get this straight. Oh. Martin and me agreed to help you with that bank robbing job. Sure, sure you did for a share of the loot. That's right. For valuable considerations, we stood ready to supply you with an alibi. You're getting paid off handsome for that alibi. I run the risk, you get the dough. That was the way we set it up. You were to take the risks. But things have sort of got out of hand. What do you mean? Me and Mart didn't figure on mixing in any murders. Least of all, the murder of a Mountie. But that... No much, Joey. You're not smart enough to tie up with Mart and me. Why, you third... What's this talk about smartness? The folks in Margate know one man pulled that robbery. Maybe they didn't see your face. But they sure know how big you are and what clothes you were wearing. Preston and that dog followed you this far. Uh, what about it? Preston stopped now. Maybe. But if he is or not, that dog of his will know your scent. And Scanlon, he'll kill you. Oh, no, he won't, because I'll get the dog first. And if you don't cut out your smart talk, Frank, I'll give you what I gave Preston. I don't think so, Joey. There's two of us. Huh? bullet that hit Preston fits your rifle. We're not taking any part of the blame for that shooting. What are you getting at? When you're found, Joey, the what? law will be satisfied. When I'm... In the way. Now, Frank, listen up. You're through, Joey. Like I said, me and Mark can't afford to mix with anybody as dumb as you, you are. are. Let go of me. Now, get away, Frank. Listen to me. You're going over the edge. No, no, listen, Frank. You can have all the cash. I'll turn every bit of it over I to you. Get it anyway, no, Joey. No, no, Frank. Push him over. No, no, wait. No. <laughs> Does it? Yep, throw his rifle after him. <clears throat> Too bad he had to have an accident. Yeah, downright shame. Hey, come on, Frank. Let's take his sled and get back to the shack. When we get there, we're getting rid of these clothes. Yeah, how come? What's wrong with him? Preston's still on the other side of the canyon. Yeah, no. I can see that big dog of his beside him. I've heard about King. He's smart. Just by smelling around here, he might be able to figure out that you and me were standing here with Joey. Yeah? We're not taking any chances. We'll hide our clothes in the cash Joey brought from the bank. Yeah, if you say so, Frank. It seems to me like a lot of unnecessary trouble. The dog can't talk. What I hear, King don't have to. Hey, what do we do about Preston? If we get everything taken care of at the shack, we'll come back and take his body into town. <laughs> yeah, that's good thinking, Frank. We can claim we just happened to find Preston on the trail. Sure. We're just two law-abiding prospectors trying to do our duty. When Joey Scanlon's bullet hit him, its impact had knocked Sergeant Preston off his feet. As he hit the ground, he struck his head on a rock and had been completely unaware of what had happened on the opposite trail. He lay unconscious in the snow while the great dog King stood guard beside him. Finally, Sergeant Preston stirred. Where? Oh, my head. Must have hit my head, but... What happened? King... Arm seems to be numb. I can't support my weight on it. Oh, that rifle shot. The man we were trailing fired from the other side of the canyon. Must have hit my arm. Sergeant Preston removed his heavy fur lined parka. Then, using his knife, slashed the blood stained sleeve of his uniform and examined the bullet wound. Got to stop the flow of blood. Working clumsily with one hand, Preston made and applied a tourniquet to his left arm. Then he struggled into his parka. From time to time, fought against a growing sense of dizziness that threatened to sweep him into unconsciousness. He stood up, swaying slightly on his feet. I've got to hold on to this tourniquet. I oh, can't drive the sled, fella. With the bridge down, we have to go back. Turn the dogs around, King. Go back to Margate. Understand, fella? You have to take over. Good boy, King. Good boy. The great husky understood his master's command. His heart was heavy with concern as he turned the dogs around and hurried them along the back trail, looking back over his shoulder periodically at Sergeant Preston slumped in the sled. It was about half an hour after Preston's dogs had pulled him and his sled away from the scene of the ambush. Wearing different clothing, Frank Morris and Mark Carey returned to the canyon's edge. They were about to start down the narrow foot trail to cross to the far side of the ravine when Frank said... Mart, hold it. And what's wrong? Monty's gone. His dogs and sled are gone, too. What do you make of it? I don't know. 
We'd better go over there and study the tracks. Uh, I guess you're right. Go ahead. You lead the way. The two killers picked their way carefully down the steep side of the canyon to the floor below. Debris from the fallen bridge lay scattered to their right as they reached the bottom. Frank, look over to your left. Yeah, I see him. Joey sure hasn't moved any. (laughs) He ain't likely to either. Come on. When they reached the top of the west wall of the ravine, Frank and Mart paused briefly to catch their breath, then hurried to the place where Sergeant Preston had fallen. They studied the tracks for several minutes in silence. Then Mart said, Joey hit him. You see a lot of blood here on the snow. Yeah. Looks like his sled was turned around and headed back to Margate. Yeah, with Preston in it. Did you think he saw us push Joey over the side of the canyon? Uh, I don't think so. If he did, we're up to our ears in trouble. Listen, Mart, I'll... Uh, I'll go back to the cabin and wait for you. Huh? What do you want me to do? You follow Preston's tracks in the town. It'll take me at least two hours to get there on foot. Preston won't be traveling very fast, so that doesn't matter. Yeah, he's lost a lot of blood. He might not get as far as town. That's what I'm thinking. Whatever's happened to him, you find out. See if you can get a line on how much he knows, then come back here and tell me. And what'll you be doing? Making sure nobody makes off with the money sack we hid. Yeah, I get started right away. You, uh, think I should say anything about the bridge being down? Yeah. Yeah, make a big fuss about it. Tell everybody it's downright and handy for us, and we'd sure like to know who chopped it down. Right. Get back here as quick as you can, Mart. If Preston knows too much, we might have to finish what Joey started. Neither King nor Sergeant Preston knew that a killer was on their trail. At the head of Preston's team of huskies, the great dog King knew just one thing... His master was depending on him. He had to get help for Preston as soon as possible. We'll continue our story in just a moment. Hey, hold on there, partner. What goes on here? Cowhand, that's what. So I see. You look like one, too. Judging from that ten-gallon hat, chaps, boots, spurs, and all. Oh, but look, mister. Just you put up those shooting irons of yours and calm down. Fellow ought to know better than to go around waving a pair of six-shooters. Partner, you're right. Dead right. But say, these are just pea shooters. For real excitement, let me tell you about the kind of gun that gives me a bigger kick than a longhorn Texas steer. Oh? Mister... I'm talking about a gun that's got them all beat. Partner, that's the gun that shoots Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. Oh, you're telling me. <laughs> yes, sir. Fellow with any zip and go to him needs to stow away a he-man breakfast. Now you're talking. And Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat fills the bill for you, huh? <laughs> Does it ever. Just pour on the old milk or cream, add your favorite fruit, and you know what? What? There's no beating this eating. That's what. (laughs) Well, sir, fellas and girls, that's a mighty good tip. So tomorrow morning, be sure to get the drop on a really swell-tasting breakfast. Eat Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat. Ready to serve breakfast cereals shot from guns. Yes, Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat are shot from guns. Actually exploded up to eight times normal size to make them crisp and tender. Bigger and better tasting. Important, too, wheat or rice shot from guns is good for you. Both delicious kinds furnish extra food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. Man, oh man, don't miss out another day. Say to Mom, from now on, I want to eat Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. Now to continue our story. When King led Sergeant Preston's dogs into the town of Margate and halted in front of Pete Clancy's trading post, friendly hands helped the wounded Mountie from his sled into the trading post. King knew the townsmen were friends, but he remained vigilant, watching every move the men made. 
Dr. Baxter, the town physician, examined and bandaged the Mountie's wound, then conferred briefly with Pete Clancy. Well, rest is all he needs, Pete. I'm doggone glad to hear that, Doc. The bump on his head knocks him dizzy, but he'll be all right when he wakens. <laughs> I guess it take more than a bullet in the arm and a bump on the head to keep Preston down. Is his dog going to stay in here with him? Well, if it wasn't for him, Preston would still be on the trail. <laughs> yeah, we'd better let King alone. Yeah. Now, you, you said he was ambushed. Yeah, trailing the critter to rob the bank this morning. The thief must have been crazy to shoot a Mountie. Well, crazy or not, Preston's off his trail now. We'll never get our cash back. Well, keep him quiet, Pete. Sure. Pop in tomorrow. When Sergeant Preston wakened, Pete Clancy had a big bowl of steaming broth ready for him. The broth was very good, Pete. Well, how about some more? No, thanks. Anything new? Well, a prospector came in from the Blue Nose Canyon. He said the bridge is down. Is he still in town? Nope. He had to get back to his partner with supplies. Uh, they live about half a mile from the canyon, if you want to talk to them. I do want to talk to them. Hand me my gun belt, Pete. Your gun belt? What for? King and I'll start after that bank robber again. May I have better luck this time. Hey, now, hold on. What about your arm? As soon as the wound heals, it'll be as good as new. But are you sure you feel well enough to travel? Of course, Pete. Well, you won't be able to cross the canyon. Well, take Little Bear Pass through the hills and avoid crossing it. Well, that'll be a longer trip. With one arm out of commission, it seems downright risky to go after that critter. Well, here's the gun belt. Thanks. He's already taken one shot at you. If he gets another chance, he'll make doggone sure he gets you. Here. Here's your park. Thanks, Pete. Can you get that sore arm into the sleeve all right? Yes, thanks. Come on, King. Bye, right, Pete. Thanks for everything. Mark Carey had stayed in town long enough to learn what he could about Sergeant Preston and tell about the collapse of the bridge. Then he returned to the cabin not far from the edge of the canyon where he reported to Frank Morris. Finding out about Preston was easy, Frank. The whole town was talking about it. So he didn't see us push Joey over the edge of the canyon, huh? No. He told the doc he figured he hit his head on a rock when he fell. When he got conscious, he got into his sled and his dog got him into town. See, I told you King was plenty smart. <laughs> yeah, you knew what you were talking about. <laughs> What you've told me, I guess we're all set. It's the way it looks to me. As soon as Preston's able to travel, he'll find Joey at the bottom of the canyon and figure the case is closed. Hey, he might wonder why the cash isn't down there with Joey. For all he knows, it's buried someplace. <laughs> Only you'll never find out <laughs> where. You know, the best part of this is that nobody will ever suspect us. We'll stay here a few days, split the cash two ways, then let folks know we're moving on to other diggings. So why not get out now while we're in the clear? That tie us into the robbery for sure. Preston or somebody else would wonder why we left. We don't want anyone to figure we're running away, see? I don't know. I think we ought to get out while we got the chance. Preston's not dumb, Mart. To outsmart him, we've got to outguess him. You leave that part up to me. When Sergeant Preston reached Blue Nose Canyon, he examined the timbers that had survived the collapse of the bridge. An axe was used to weaken the bridge, King. I suppose the thief planned to stop us that way, and perhaps he got panicky, felt a bullet would stop us permanently. As Sergeant Preston stood at the canyon's edge, looking at the debris on the floor below, he noticed something else. King, there's a man down there. Come on, boy. The Mountie and his dog cautiously made their way to the bottom of the ravine and hurried to the side of the man who lay on the ground. He's dead, all right. Couldn't survive a fall like that. Yes, fella, I know. He fits the description of the bank robber. But I don't see anything of the cash he took. He'll still be on his sled. We'll have to track his dogs. Come on, boy. We'll need help to carry his body to the sled. When Sergeant Preston reached the trail along the canyon's edge, he leaned momentarily against his sled he saw a faint curl of smoke rising from behind a stand of timber. That must be where the prospector lives, boy. Pete said his cabin was about a half mile from the canyon. Come on, King, I want to talk to him. Get the dogs up, boy. Come, King! Come! When he heard the sound of an approaching dog team... Frank Morris looked out the window of the shack he shared with his partner. Who's coming, Frank? Hey, Mart, look... See that sled just coming from the trees? Yes, Preston. 
That's what I thought. And King's with him. King knows we had anything to do with a man who shot Preston. He'll kill us. What's that Mountie coming here for? You soon know why he's coming here. You think he suspects something? I don't know any more than you do. Well, you better keep your gun handy, Frank. I will. You go out the back way and get Joey's dogs out of sight. Right. Now tie him up in the woods. Get back here in the double. I might need help. From what the folks in town said, I thought Preston would be laid up for a couple of days. Well, he's not. Get that park on and get out of here. Yeah, I'm on my way. Go easy with that door, you... Gone. I'll put my gun inside my shirt in case I need it. Uh, just a second. Well, hello. Mind if I come in for a minute? I'd like to talk to you. Sure. Sure thing. Step right in. As the great dog King followed his master into the cabin, he caught the sharp scent of fear in the stranger's manner. It was a hateful scent that aroused the dog's immediate antagonism. What's that dog growling at? Quiet, King. He's just letting me know he's on guard. Why, he don't have any reason to be on guard here. King won't harm you. I, uh, I don't like dogs. I'd feel a lot better if you'd put him outside. Very well. Come on, King. Outside, boy. Out you go. I'll be with you in a few minutes, fellow. You satisfied now? Thanks. Thanks a lot. I guess it seems downright foolish, but I uh, i don't think that dog likes me. Are you the man who reported the bridge being down? No. Uh, no, my partner reported it when he went into town for supplies. But I can tell you as much about it as he can if uh, that's why you're here. It is. My name's Preston, Sergeant Preston. Yeah, glad to know you. I'm Frank Morris. I uh, hope something can be done about getting that bridge fixed mighty soon. As long as it's down me and might have to go into town the long way. When did you learn about it being down? This morning. I figured it went down during the night. It looks to me like somebody chopped it down. Yes, I examined the timbers. Did you know there's a dead man at the bottom of the canyon? What? He robbed the bank at Margate this morning. What do you know about him? I, uh, I know nothing about him. I didn't even know he was down there. Strange you didn't notice the body at the bottom of the drop. I wasn't looking for any bodies. I, uh, I don't savvy this, Sergeant. You think he weakened the bridge? Perhaps. But he couldn't have done it alone. Why not? King and I were just a few miles behind him. He crossed the canyon, but when I got there, the bridge was down. Maybe a partner was waiting for him. I think that's obvious. He might have had an argument. Maybe that robber you were chasing fell over the edge. Maybe he was pushed over. I'm going to need help to get his body on my sled. I'll be glad to help you haul him out, Sergeant. Then you can get after that partner of his. Just a second, I'll get my park on. When Sergeant Preston put him out of the cabin, King felt hurt. But he forgot this feeling when he recognized the scent of the bank robber's dogs in the area around the small shack. He was surprised to learn that the team he had been following that morning had stopped here sometime during the day. King followed the scent of the dogs through the woods for about half a mile. He was out of sight of the cabin and hesitated to go farther for fear Preston might need him. He decided to turn back. He had gone but a few steps along his back trail when he noticed a small area where the snow had been tramped down. Obeying his instincts, King started digging. Here, I've got my park on, Sergeant. Let's go over the canyon and haul that fellow out of there. All right. Hey, King. Come on, boy. Hey, what's that dog got? Looks like he's dug something out of the snow. He's dragging it over here. Confounded mutt. Tell him to let that alone. That's my property, you hear? He's got no right Take to... Take it t- easy. Tell him to drop that he sack. He won't hurt it. I I think I'll have a look at that sack. No, you don't, Preston. Oh, a gun, eh? That's right. I'll use it, too. You better stop that dog right there or he'll get the first one. Easy, King. Hold it, boy. That's better. At Preston's command to halt, King stopped his advance. Then he unobtrusively edged to the side, so that it would be impossible for Frank Morris to keep him and his master covered at the same time. You must know what's in that sack, Morris. You better have a good explanation for trying to keep me from seeing it. I, uh, I want the facts. Stay away from that money sack, Preston, or I'll let you have it in the other arm. Money sack, eh? And you know about the ambush. Maybe you fired that shot across the canyon this morning. No, I didn't. Joey Scanlon was the one that shot you. Who's Scanlon? Scanlon's at the bottom of Blue Nose Canyon. That's where you'll be, too. Another accident like Scanlon's, eh? You got only yourself and that dog to thank for it. 
got rid of Joey because I didn't want any part of shooting him out of here. Now I got no choice. You made your choice when you threw in the scanning. Take him, King! Frank Morris aimed low. As King leaped, he realized his bullet should have been higher, but he had no time to fire again. King's full weight smashed against his chest. The outlaw hit the ground with stunning force. His gun fairly jumped from his hand. As Sergeant Preston stooped to pick up Frank Morris's gun, a bullet streaked past his head. The body scooped up the pistol and started firing. Drop your gun and make it fast. My arm, you busted my arm. You'll have more than that if you don't come this way slowly. I'm coming. I give up. Don't, don't shoot again. Keep your hands where I can see them. Sergeant, call this dog off. Call him off. I've had enough. Let him get back. All right, King. Good work, fella. On guard, boy. Get up, Morris. Marshal Jughead, why didn't you kill him when you had the chance? You had to drop on him. Oh, I didn't know he was going to duck. I didn't have a chance to shoot twice. Well, listen, Preston. It wasn't me that pushed Joey over the canyon. You can't pin anything on me. You're in it just as much as I am. You can't back out now. I won't take all the blame. You're both under arrest in the name of the Queen. And it's my guess the jury will hang the two of you for murder. <laughs> yes, King. You dug up the money that exposed these crooks. Thanks to you, this case is closed. In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Monday's adventure. Say, if you can't make up your mind which you like best, Quaker Pup wheat or Quaker Pup rice, here's what you do. Don't miss out on either of these delicious, ready-to-serve breakfast cereals. Keep a supply of both kinds on hand. Eat Quaker Pup wheat one time, Quaker Pup rice the next. Wheat or rice shot from guns is never sold in bags or bulk. Look for the big red and blue package with the smiling Quaker man on the front. Get the original, crisp, fresh Quaker puff wheat and Quaker puff rice. And say, fellas and girls, it's coming. You're soon to hear about an exciting special offer made to all listeners to this program. Don't miss a single broadcast. Be sure to be on hand for the big news. It's terrific. These radio dramas... A feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from gun. Listen Monday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case of the coward. I don't suppose you could blame Judd for being a coward. He was afraid that the same men who killed John Dryden would kill him. King and I had to conquer his fear before we could solve the case. And when we did, it was very nearly too late. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Monday. For a delicious hot breakfast, eat Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Yes, the giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Say, boys and girls, do you want to be a star someday in sports and activities? Then start on good Quaker Oats breakfast tomorrow. Because nourishing oatmeal gives you more growth and endurance than any other whole grain cereal. Still less than one penny a serving. Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice. So long. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.